Shalom, this is Nizama Shal Hamadabar Yasharal on my channel Nizama the Hebrew Mystic Healer. Before I get started, I'd like to go ahead and show a little love to my 3D Kim, the 12 tribes of Israel scattered to the four corners of this 3D earth realm. Shalom, much love to you all. I'd also like to show a little love to my cosmic kin, scattered to the 12 dimensions of this universal egg matrix. Shalom, much love to you as well. And as always, to go a little love and support to my viewers, especially those subscribed. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do so now and don't forget to hit the notification bell. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about how we can find our shadow totems. What is a shadow totem? What is a totem? And how can it be used as a tool to face the darker aspects of ourselves, integrate and transmute? So let me first identify what a totem is. The concept of the totem really goes back to all ancient civilizations, but at least in my take, I personally view the totem as part of our DNA resonance. Now, it can be a tribal totem, it can be a family totem, it can be a personal totem. But regardless of what kind of totem it is, it is very much a part of us and an expression of us and certain attributes or abilities that we have, strengths and weaknesses. Now, where a shadow totem is different is a shadow totem specifically represents our shadow side or the attributes or aspects of ourselves that we push into the shadows or repress into the unconscious mind. So how do we find our shadow totem? Well, first I'd like to say that there are also shadow animal guides and animal guides and animal totems are similar, except that animal totems are with us. They do not leave. They're, they go back, like I said, they can be connected to us, they can be connected to our ancestors, and they can be connected to a whole tribe identity. Whereas animal guides can come and go. They are teachers. Once we learn the lesson, then that animal guide will usually disappear. Sometimes they reappear later, but they are not with us consistently throughout our entire lives as totems are. So an animal guide can also be an animal shadow guide as well. So if you are doing a lot of shadow work, you may have animal shadow guides show up. And once you have integrated those aspects of yourself, then that shadow animal guide may disappear and another one may come up. But we can also have more than one shadow totem, just like we can have more than one totem. So I just wanted to make that clear. Now, how do we identify a shadow totem or a shadow animal guide? We do this by identifying what animals, insects, birds, fish, or reptiles we have an inversion to. This can also be a mythological creature, believe it or not. All it is is a representation, right, of these particular attributes that we don't want to face about ourselves. They don't even have to be quote-unquote bad or negative. They could just be those that we feel are unseemly, that we feel are a weakness, or we feel are not socially acceptable. So... An animal that would be an animal shadow guide or animal shadow totem would be an animal that we are repulsed by, that we are afraid of, that we strongly dislike or have a negative association with. Those are commonly shadow animal totems or shadow animal guides. Now, regardless if it's a totem or guide, it's still an expression of the traits that we're repressing in ourselves. Now, how animal shadow guides or animal shadow totems can help us is that in identifying the traits of the animal that make us uncomfortable, we can then identify the traits that we are uncomfortable with about ourselves so that we have repressed into the shadow. So let me give you an example. My, or one of my shadow totems, I should say, is a black widow. I have been afraid of spiders, specifically black widows, since I can remember. It wasn't a crippling fear or a phobia, but it was enough to make me run the other direction if I saw one really close to me. And I didn't realize it until much later, but starting in my early 20s, I actually had visits from the black widow physically around me, near me, and near my hand, near my face. And then in my mid-20s, I finally started doing shadow work, or at least beginning shadow work intuitively. And I was led during a shamanic journey to find my shadow totem, and lo and behold, it was a black widow. 
So fast forward in time, even though I knew what my shadow totem was and oh, this is my shadow totem. What I didn't understand is how to work with the shadow totem. How do I heal? What is the medicine that the shadow totem has to offer me? So a few years back, again, Black Widow appeared in my life, appeared in my life physically. I couldn't understand why almost every time I would go to bed, I'd wake up in the middle of the night and there would be a Black Widow near my head. When I would go to kill it, I couldn't seem to find it, it would run away, and I would destroy the web and then the next night it would be back again, or a few days later it would be back again. Now, I didn't understand the time that you're not supposed to, not only should we not, you know, please don't, you know, unnecessarily kill animals or insects or anything like that. It's not okay. It's not cool to do. But specifically, we don't want to do that with our totems or our guys. They're there to teach us. So it wasn't until I started really looking at this and going, okay, I remember when I did this journey a long time ago, the Black Widow was my shadow totem. Okay, the Black Widow is coming up. It's not going away. What, what am I not dealing with here? What am I not facing? So I started looking at the traits of the Black Widow. What makes me uncomfortable about the Black Widow? What makes the Black Widow stand out? What makes the Black Widow alluring? Is the Black Widow poisonous? Is it predatorial? What is it about the Black Widow that I possess and an attribute to myself that I'm repressing? Once I was able to identify that, all of a sudden the Black Widow stopped coming around. I started to accept that I had these particular traits. And when I accepted that, the integration process began. Now, you know, fast forward back to the present, not only do I revere or respect the Black Widow and other spiders, I'm no longer afraid of them. I actually feel more of a kinship with them. Why? Because I'm no longer afraid of those traits of myself. I'm not running from them anymore. I'm not hiding from them. Now, recently I went on a shadow workshop retreat. Um, I had a mixed bag experience with it. And I was not taught anything about shadow totems. In fact, whenever I've dealt with shamans, I've never talked about it. This is something that I found out on my own through my own journeying. And in fact, I got actually a negative response from the shaman when I had a wasp come up. The shaman was like freaked out by that because in her experience, she looked at the wasp as a negative symbol. But what that showed me is that she was mirroring back to me that I was looking at the wasp as something negative, and that's when I realized that the wasp is another shadow totem. I started understanding, wow, wasp has actually been with me for a while. Um, when I would go camping, when I would be swimming in the pools, these wasps and these hornets would always be flying around me, and it would freak me out, and I'd run, and I'd jump in the pool, or I'd run away in the camp and make a big scene, and my friends would laugh, my husband would laugh, but it got me thinking. This is another shadow totem because this totem has been with me my whole life, right in front of my face, yet I still couldn't face that this was something in my shadow I've been repressing. Now this totem, believe it or not, has actually been with me longer. I was stung multiple times by wasps and hornets and even a bee when I was a kid and had wasps around me quite a bit, off and on. Now, they didn't sting me after that. And in fact, I had a wasp come as a positive symbol to me when I was meditating once. But I digress. The point being is wasp has actually been with me longer than the Black Widow, which means it was a deeper aspect of my shadow, a deeper layer of myself. Now, it may not have been as quote-unquote deadly as the Black Widow attributes that I was repressing, but it was definitely parts of myself that I've been repressing since I was a child. So now I have begun dealing with those aspects and those attributes of myself and integrating them in. And I'm sure once that process is done, I will no longer fear wasps and hornets. I'll begin to revere them and have that type of kinship with them. So I just wanted to give you guys an example using my own personal experience of how we can work with shadow totems. I find them to be a very easy way to do shadow work because the symbolism is so strong and so obvious. There's also a lot on the internet that you can look up to help identify, well, what are certain character traits of certain um, animals? Now, again, the same thing applies if it were a mythological creature. So it doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong totem. There's no right or wrong animal guide, shadow or otherwise. So I just wanted to kind of make that clear. Now. This should definitely help you guys, and I am going to be doing um, other videos. I'm going to try to cover all the areas that are related to, you know, spirituality, healing, growth, 
Um, I will continue to do information videos. I have some other videos coming up I've been promising you guys that have part two, three, and four to them. But I just really felt the need to do this video. I feel like we are going through a lot right now in the earth with collective shadow work, with what's going on with 5G and this coronavirus, and I don't want to get into all of that, but it got me thinking, this is a time for us collectively and individually to do shadow work. Many people are in quarantine. Many people are sitting at home. This is the time to go inward. Our physical environment is symbolic of that need to go inward. So I just felt it was important to do a video on this. Now, I want to let you guys know that I'm creating a Patreon account and I'm going to be actually doing guided meditations on how to find your shadow totem. Guided meditations on certain psychic shielding I use, cloaking mechanisms, um, certain meditations for grounding and opening up chakras, certain mantras, um, past life regression techniques that I've used for myself. So I just wanted to go ahead, just things of that nature. I wanted um, to go ahead and let you guys know that I am creating a Patreon account for that purpose. I will be dropping the link of the Patreon account in the link to this video. So if anyone is interested, definitely check that out. It's going to be very affordable. It is by month. So it is a monthly um, fee in order to be on that. But it will be well worth it because it's going to be a small amount and I will teach you guys techniques so that you'll be able to heal yourselves and you know through guided meditation and guiding yourselves in these different various healing practices so I just wanted to go ahead and put that out there now I will of course continue to post videos on my YouTube channel but the patreon is going to be more in depth with actual techniques that you can use yourself in your healing journey so That'll be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely, like I said, check out Patreon. I'm going to be putting it in the drop down menu. And keep your eye out for other videos coming up. I've got my part three on the Kabbalah coming up, my part two of the channeling from my council, the Orion Council of Nine on the hidden history of the universe. I'm also going to do videos on how to identify false light beings, false light doctrines, and also how to deal with arconic beings um, on a spiritual physical level. And I'm also going to be identifying the tetragrammaton and the demurge. So these are some videos that are going to be coming up. So stay tuned. Take care. Much love to you guys. Shalom.